I'm going to demonstrate how to prepare and load pre-installation SATA drivers for a Windows 10 TH2 installation. Now, although I'm going to use Windows 10 TH2 as an example, these instructions are equally applicable to Windows 8.1, Windows 8, Windows 7, and Windows Vista. So when I made the written version of this guide, it greatly confused the readers. They didn't know whether they needed SATA pre-installation drivers or not. So I would say in the vast majority of cases, end users won't need SATA pre-installation drivers because Windows installation media will have the pre-installation drivers inbuilt. So if you have already installed Windows, then you don't need to worry about pre-installation SATA drivers. If, however, you're stuck during the installation and cannot find your hard drive, you need the SATA pre-installation drivers. Opposed to the just use them if Windows installation doesn't work answer, a more detailed answer is that it's essentially the age of your hardware versus the age of your Windows installation media. For Windows 10, Microsoft are committing to keeping the Windows installation media up to date. So that means you should never be far behind the SANA pre-installation drivers. Every new build of Windows 10 should have all the previous release SATA pre-installation drivers from Intel. So I don't see this being much of an issue for Windows 10 in the future. For Windows 7, however, the most up-to-date installation media is Service Pack 1, and that was released in 2011. So to install Windows 7 on hardware made in 2012, 2013, 2014, 2015, and onwards, it's getting more and more likely that you'll need to carry out this step. So let's show what these problems are. First, we boot from the USB installation media, and I'm going to select the UEFI boot here. And we start the Windows installation. So we're presented with the normal installation screens, then select your language, then select next, and then select install, and then input your product key unless it's automatically input or skip the input of product key and select addition and then select next and then accept the license agreement and then select to do a custom install and now you should be at the main screen which we want to look at the where do you want to install windows and we've got here we couldn't find any drives to get a storage drive click load driver now, in my case, we can't find any drives because I've actually physically removed the solid state drive from the system, so the hard drive bay is blank. I had to do this to emulate this scenario because Windows 10 TH2 installation media has the SATA pre-installation drivers for my model inbuilt. However, we'll assume that it doesn't, and we'll go through the procedure of preparing SATA drivers to load now. So historically these were called F6 FLPY drivers as they had to be loaded within the Windows XP setup by pressing F6 and you guessed it, they had to be loaded from a floppy drive. Luckily things have moved on and we no longer need to use a floppy drive or F6. Instead, we can prepare these drivers on a bootable USB. So I've just went to downloads.tel.com. I know my system's a laptop, and I know it's a Latitude, and I know it's an E5510. And now I'm going to scroll down to Serial ATA, because that's where I'll get the SATA pre-installation drivers. So if I keep scrolling down, the system's got quite a lot of drivers because they will support it with multiple operating systems. Here we go, Serial ATA. And you see there's the Intel Rapid Storage Technology, pre 
operating system install driver. So this is for Windows 7 64-bit, Windows Vista 64-bit, and Windows XP 64-bit. Windows 8.1 and Windows 10 64-bit aren't listed here, but these drivers can be used with more up-to-date Windows installation media if the drivers aren't inbuilt on the Windows installation media. So they are in this case, but we're going to load them anyway. So we just launched installer and just copy the location that it extracts to, just in case the folder doesn't open up. So in this case, the folder that the SATA pre-installation drivers get extracted to opens up fine. So all we need to do now is basically copy them to a USB flash drive. So I'll just make a new folder in the USB flash drive and I'll just call it F6 FLPY and X64. In some cases, you would extract both 64-bit and 32-bit drivers and they would be in different folders, usually named X64 or X86. Obviously, you select the 64-bit drivers for a 64-bit install and the 32-bit drivers for a 32-bit install. Sometimes they won't directly list SATA pre-installation drivers. They will instead be part of an application. So preparing them is slightly more work. First, we need to launch the Dell application. What this application does is first extract the driver. And when we're prompted for an extract location for the driver, we'll just use the default and save the location. After the SATA drivers and the setup for the application are extracted, we simply cancel the launch of the Intel application setup. And we go to Windows Explorer and we paste the location of the SATA pre-installation drivers in the address bar. And what we should have is an X64 folder, which is the 64-bit SATA pre-installation drivers, and an X86 folder, which is the 32-bit SATA pre-installation drivers. The application within this folder can be ignored at this point. And one of the points I'm wanting to make is that the Windows setup cannot read .exe or Windows applications. The SATA pre-installation drivers must be in the form as shown. So now let's actually return to the Windows setup so I can show you how to load the SATA pre-installation drivers. So all we're going to do is insert the USB that we loaded the SATA pre-installation drivers onto earlier and then on this screen we're going to select browse and then we're going to select the SATA USB that we prepared and we're going to select the folder and on this screen the button that says hide drivers that aren't compatible with this computer's hardware should be checked now all the drivers shown should be compatible with this computer's hardware if multiple are shown then left click the top one and then hold down shift and left click the bottom one this will select on the drivers so you can select next once you've loaded all the drivers you should see on the partitions on a solid state drive or hard drive as you would normally do in a windows setup so you can of course then delete all these partitions and install Windows 10 TH2 on the unallocated space.